But now let's dive in and expand this a little bit by talking about something more than just a single proportion. Let's talk about two proportions. It's, this is a direct continuation of some of the stuff we've been doing before. We did a single sample t-test and then we did two independent samples t-test and then two paired samples t-test. Now we're going to do single sample proportion and then a test of two proportions and then a test of uh, two different proportions. And we're only going to do one of the proportions tests actually by the way. So the learning objectives are just to understand how to apply hypothesis tests and confidence interval processes to the situation of proportions, which shouldn't be too difficult because you know how to do all the hypothesis testing stuff. We just need to plug in a couple of different numbers and a couple of different concepts. But this isn't brand new tearing you down and redoing things. So there's a number of different hypothesis test possibilities that we can have here. Uh, we, if, we, if we're doing hypothesis tests, we either just have one variable, in which case we would look at this um, just this first column here, or we have two variables. And so if you have two variables, there are these, these possibilities. One of them could be numerical and the other one numerical, in which case we have regression and correlation, if we have two numerical variables. Or we could have a numerical variable predicting a categorical variable. There's certain types of regression that work like, that work like this. You have polytomous regression and things like that, Categor categorical regression and some really esoteric modeling things. And then if you have a categorical variable predicting a numerical variable, a categorical predictor, in other words a grouping variable that's categorical, and then a numerical dependent or response variable, then that's what we've been doing mostly. That's t-tests and ANOVA. And then down here, proportion tests and chi-square tests are when you have a categorical variable and a categorical variable. We have two categorical variables. And so that's the situation we have here. We have, we're going to have two categorical variables right here, and each of them are going to be binary. Each of them are going to, yeah, each of them are going to be binary, have only two possibilities. They're going to be dichotomous. So let's remember the basic principle that the nature of the data always determines the appropriate treatment of the data. Of course, you can treat data very badly if you want to, but you shouldn't. That's not nice. What do the data ever do to you? So for confidence intervals and hypothesis tests, we can categorize and make a big table out of all the stuff we've done so far. Uh, just some information about each one. You don't need to write down this table. But when you have your dependent variable that's numerical, then you have all these possibilities. You have your population value, your sampling distribution of the mean or of the difference between means or the sampling distribution of the mean square between the variance between means the shape is T or over here the shape of the sampling distribution is F. The standard errors, these standard errors are over here kind of the mean square within is sort of the standard error. The expected value of the sample statistics. I encourage you to lovingly uh, study this table until you understand everything in it and why everything is where it is. But this is just to kind of show us where we're at right now. We've done one sample proportion, dichotomous data, all this information, and now we're going to do two sample proportions. So for one sample proportion test we had p hat, so a sample proportion being compared against, or sorry, being compared against down here p p0. So we we had it this, this p0 down here. And for a confidence interval then we would assume that p hat was our best estimate of the true population proportion. So we, we needed to consider the sampling distribution of the sample proportion, which was z-shaped and had a standard error, though we had a cute little formula for calculating of this. And for a null hypothesis test, we specified uh, a value that we had to get from a theory or from deep thinking or something like that. This p0, the null hypothesis implied proportion, or mu0 of p, whatever you want to call it. Now we're going to do two sample proportions, where the statistics of interest, we actually have two. We have a proportion from one sample and proportion from another sample. Still dichotomous data. Uh, the population value we're estimating is the difference between two population proportions, and we're going to estimate that by using the difference between our sample proportions as our best estimate. And we're going to imagine the sampling distribution of all differences between sample proportions, which will be Z-shaped, not T-shaped anymore. The proportion thing, we're always doing Z. And there's a formula to calculate the standard error of that distribution of the distribution of differences between proportions. And just like with a two sample t-test, the null hypothesis says that the difference between the two proportions is zero. In other words, that the proportions are the same in the population, no matter what we actually see in our sample. So let's dive into this test. Let's look back at our data grouping. This should be a little familiar from a couple of weeks ago. If you have these little scales, the 
up and down scales there indicating there's a numerical variable for each of these individuals. If you have two groups of individuals and each individual has a value on this numerical scale, then you have a mean of that numerical number for that group. And then you have this other group and each individual there has a value on this numerical scale and you can come up with a mean value and that's the mean of that other group. You can compare those two means by using um, a sampling or by using a, a t-test for means, right? So now we have dichotomous variable, binary variable. You've got the proportion test going on here. And you've got that the two possibilities, A, B, success, failure, yes, no, one, zero, whatever the two possibilities are. And so each individual can have a value, either an A or a B value, in group one. You can add up all the A's or add up all the B's, whatever you want to do, divide it by the total, and then you have a proportion. So in this case, we have the proportion of A's in group one is 0.4, the proportion of B's in group one is 0.6. So then we have, it, let's say that we choose to focus on the proportion of A's, of people in category A. So then we have P1 is 0.4. So the proportion, the sample proportion in in group one of A's is 0.4. Now we could have gone with B's, then it would be 0.6, but you've got to be consistent. Let's stick with A. So in group two, you have similar situation. People are either falling in category A or B, or they have a value of A or B in whatever this variable is, equivalent ways of saying things. And then you have the A's here are 80% of the people in group two, and the B's are 20%, so P2 is 0.8. Now, you probably realize I'm violating a condition because I don't have 10 of each in each group but this is just for demonstration purposes. And so you compare those proportions. You do a hypothesis test. The null hypothesis says that these two proportions, even though they're different, 0.4 and 0.8, they came from some two populations that had the same proportion. That's what the null hypothesis says. And the alternative hypothesis says, nah, -uh, group two is totally bigger than group one or something like that. There's totally more A's in group two than group one. Another way to look at this is continuing the pattern that we had before is sort of uh, do you have this this condition? Do you have this characteristic or don't you? So P1 and P2 would be formed by the proportion of people who have the condition. This is equivalent to just saying checking that A or B box. It's equivalent. It's just saying there's only two things that can be true of each participant or each case. And you're just counting the number of those cases who have that thing and dividing them by the total. So you'd get the same thing, 0.4 and 0.8. Although, I think I might, no, no, I did it right. Or maybe more familiar, the independent samples proportion test. We can say that each individual has either an A or B value, and that forms this group. And then we count the A's, and that's our proportion for this group. I'm just going through the same thing over and over again, and P1 is the proportion from that group. And then group B of individuals, each person has either an A or a B value, whatever that is, like they're male or female, or they succeeded or didn't at their summer job or whatever. So you count the A's in that group, and P2. Although I don't think the numbers are the same here as they were before. The, so remember that the core of a hypothesis test is just the difference between what your data gives you and what the null hypothesis says it should in general give you. So the null hypothesis expected value. So that difference and then you divide it by a standard error. So a hypothesis test is always this. A null value, min or sorry, the data minus null over a standard error. So in this case, the z-test for two proportions, technically the whole thing is like this, but don't worry, we're going to erase some of this here in a minute. So it's the difference between the proportions in your sample, this part over here, minus the difference between the proportions in the population according to the null hypothesis divided by the standard error. So a diff one difference minus another difference, the difference between two differences. But this difference over here is always zero. So the difference according to the null hypothesis in the population is always zero, so that just disappears from the formula. So this is going to be your nice simple z of your of your um, of of p. Well, z of p1 minus p2. It's the z observed that you're going to be getting from these from these calculations here. And the standard error, of course, there's the standard error. This is the formula. It's pretty much the standard error for a single proportion, just with two of them underneath the same radical sign. So you can see how that works. It's pretty simple. I mean, it takes some calculating, but you only plug, plug in a few values in there and you've got what, 
what you need. There's only four values, p from one sample and n from one sample, p from the other sample, n from the other sample. And then you spend two minutes calculating and you've got your standard error. Now let's remember that we have a sampling distribution. It's going to be a normal shaped sampling distribution because I've already told you it's a z. It's composed of all possible differences between proportions. So it's composed of all possible take a sample from population that the proportion 1 came from, take a sample from the population that proportion 2 came from, calculate the percentage or the proportion of cases that are like this in sample 1, the proportion that are like this in sample 2, and then the difference between those two proportions. There's one value for your for your sampling distribution. Do that again and again, infinite number of times. Assuming that the null hypothesis is true and that the two samples are actually identical. So this is the sampling distribution of differences between two proportions, assuming the null hypothesis is true. Now if you're doing a confidence interval, then you just assume that the true difference between proportions is the difference you see in your sample, just like between means. A confidence interval for the difference between two means is just an, is just an assumption that, or is based on the assumption that the true difference between population means is the same as the difference we see in our sample between sample means. Same here. We see, we assume that the population proportion difference is the same as the sample proportion difference. So the shape of this is going to be normal. The expected value is zero for a hypothesis test. For a confidence interval, it's the difference between our two samples. And the standard error is the standard error from that formula. So to calculate a confidence interval, it's always a sample statistic, plus and minus, like 1.96 or 1.65 or whatever standard errors. So in this case, the sample point estimate is a difference between two proportions, so it's proportion 1 minus proportion 2, proportion from sample 1 minus proportion from sample 2, plus or minus our critical z, which is going to be 1.65 or 1.96 or 2.58, times the standard error that we calculated previously. The standard error doesn't change, whether it's hypothesis tests or uh, confidence intervals. And there is, of course, a test for two, paired, for two paired proportions. And there's a confidence interval for two paired proportions. And it's all based on this kind of assumption that you have one group of individuals. Each individual gives you two values on a binary variable, the same binary variable, uh, under two different conditions, for instance. and each person gives you two values, and those values might be the same, they might be different, etc. They have the weird stag beetles with their long antenna. And those form your proportions, or form your groups, and then you get a proportion from each group. So you've got the proportion of the individuals under condition 1 who had whatever the thing is you're measuring, the proportion of individuals under condition 2 who had whatever value it is you're measuring, and you compare those two proportions. It's not actually that complicated. If you're interested, you could look it up. I'm sure you could figure it out, but we're not going to do it in this class. Uh, you should just be aware that it's there. We can't do all the tests. There's just too many of them. We're not going to learn that right now. So this hypothesis test for proportions, exactly the same as all the other hypothesis tests. And that's where I'm going to wrap it up for this video.